Welcome back to the last section of the course, distributing your software. In this section, we're going to look at four different ways to distribute our Python code to users, coworkers, clients, or the world at large. The methods we're going to examine are ZipApp, Wheel, PyInstaller, and Cython. The features of these approaches overlap somewhat, but each of them has something that distinguishes it. Each of them has a reason why you might choose it over the others. Let's start with the video distributing applications in ZipApp format. In this video, we're going to learn what ZipApp does and how to use it to package up a program, and we'll learn how to run a ZipApp once we've created it. A ZipApp is just a bundling of many Python files together into a single .pyz file, which the Python interpreter knows how to run. Basically, making a ZipApp means taking all of the loose files that make up our program and putting them together into one ZipApp file, or sometimes a few distinct ones if our code base represents more than one program. ZipApp is different from the other tools we'll be talking about in this section because it is extremely lightweight. Programs packaged as zip apps are tiny, and they are dead simple to distribute and update because all we have to do is copy the file and maybe overwrite the old version. The tool that creates zip apps is also simpler than the other tools we'll be looking at because it doesn't even try to be clever. It takes the files we tell it to use and bundles them up, no more and no less. This simplicity makes a zip app a simple and straightforward way of distributing our Python program, as long as we can live with the limitations. The primary limitation is that we can't run a zip app unless we have Python installed. That makes them less useful for wide distribution. There's nothing wrong with asking users to install Python first before using your program, but we do want to keep the install process simple when we're targeting a larger audience. On the other hand, within a team or an organization, ZipApp is often going to be the best bet. So let's take a look at how to package up our ORE client as a zip app. There's only one tiny change we need to make to the source code. We need to give it a simple entry point function that requires no parameters. Where before we created an ORE client app and called its run method right inside the double underscore name equals double underscore main block, we've now moved it to a new main function and called the main function from the if block. That's because zip apps don't use the same mechanism for launching the program as that we have been using previously. And we really need to be able to give it the module and function name to run when the app is started. Our new main function will work nicely for that. And this way our program does the same thing no matter how it's started. We've made one other change, which is that we moved the ORE package directory inside a folder named app. The name isn't particularly important, but whatever we put inside that directory will be packaged up as part of the zip app file, and that matters. We can include multiple packages in the zip app just by copying them into the app directory. This is rather similar to linking static libraries into an executable when working with a compiled language. If the program has any third party dependencies, and we're legally allowed to distribute them, putting them into the app directory simplifies things for our users. Now that we've collected all the files we want to bundle up, creating a zip app is easy. The build.sh file is just a simple script to run the command because it's long and complex and I didn't want to type it as we were talking. The python-m zip app part of the command is just telling Python we want to run the zip app command. After that is the name of the directory where we want it to find the collected files for bundling. Then we tell zip app how to run Python for this program with the dash dash python argument. The slash user slash bin slash env space python 3.7 part tells that it should look for the installed python 3.7 on any Mac or Unix system where the program gets run. Windows works differently, but the PyLauncher on Windows understands how to interpret this as well, so this one file is universal across all the major operating systems. Next, we tell zipapp that we want it to run the main function from the oare.client.double underscore main module when the program is started. Finally, we tell zipapp what we want it to call the generated program file, which in this case is client.pyz. The .pyz extension is standard, and it's important on Windows, so I suggest always including it. If we had left out the dash dash output command line argument entirely, zipapp would have chosen a name by appending .pyz to the end of the name of the collected files directory. So in this case, it would have chosen to call it app.pyz. And now we have a zipapp file which contains a complete program, or at least all of the parts of it that are, we don't expect to be part of the Python installation on the target computer. How do we run it? Yep, simple as that. We can run a zip app simply by starting it up like any other program. In a mouse-based interface, we can just double-click on the .pyz file to run it, or use whatever other mechanism we like for running programs. So, zip apps are simple to build, simple to distribute, and simple to run. But they require Python to be installed on the computer where they're going to be running, and depending on what is included in the bundle, they might also require some additional packages to be installed. 
They're a particularly good choice for distributing software within a team or an organization.